Ladies and gentlemen, it's profile time. Oh, oh yes, indeed. Is, uh, it, is it going to be who we think it is? Hey, you know, hey, this is this man. I think we can all agree Manchester United great. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, good in the air for a little man. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Wonderful on the ball. Dominated the midfield for years. Mm. Ah, really respected amongst his fellow pros as well. You can't say anything against him. It's George Best, the Belfast boy. Ah, come on, Bestie. Oh. Gets clapped in. Yeah, already. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. That's it. God, oh, dear, oh dear. George Best. Uh, wonderful name, wonderful man. Uh, he was born on the 22nd of May, 1946. 21 years before the summer of love. A bit I, slower than usual, though. You're out of practice. Yeah. I completely forgot about to it. To be honest with you, I think 1946 was probably a summer of love as well. Oh, George yeah. Best yeah. was from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I bet he enjoyed the real summer of love. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> he would have been 21 years old. <laughs> <laughs> With a lot of money in his yeah. pocket. Yeah. <laughs> God. The, mind, the mind boggles the yeah. big pooch. Um, th- th- this is the man who once boldly proclaimed, if I'd have been born ugly, you'd have never heard of Pele. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one I of the, would. Yeah, yeah. One of the, gra- uh, the game's great superstars, mm. um, with, without a doubt, uh, and a stunning player with speed, balance, vision, uh, good with both feet, absolutely everything. Uh, but the first we'll, we'll, sort of like rock star footballer, really. Po- yeah, possibly. I mean, there, there, there's been a few, but I think w- with regards to um, being on television, front pages, all mm. that kind of stuff. El Beetle. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But it's worth saying that, as you alluded to there, the, the man did not have a weakness to his game. Yeah. He had everything. Even a haircut. Yeah, great haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, oh, d- 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 incredible. Um, he was a small, skinny teenager um, from uh, Belfast uh, Craigar Estates. Forgive me if that's a uh, wrong pronunciation. Um, he was rejected by his local club, Gen- uh, Glen Torren, for being too small. Yeah. Uh, but they regret that, don't they? Yeah. Um, he was spotted by Bob Bishop, um, the Manchester United scout, quite famously, um, who said to Sir Matt Bosby, Boss, I think I found you a genius. Um, so, <laughs> no, not him. <laughs> George Best. <laughs> um, uh, indeed, when he was he was only fifteen, he went to Manchester for a two week trial in nineteen sixty one, and he was very homesick straight away, as you can imagine a fifteen year old lad would be. Um, so he, I think he went home just after two days, or, or he was certainly feeling very homesick after after two days, uh, and went back. Um, but Busby was so impressed by that uh, short period that he saw him that uh, two years later, at the age of seventeen, Georgie Best made his Manchester United debut against West Bromwich Albion. And he put in a fantastic performance as well. He singled out for uh, praise by the Manchester Evening, Evening News for natural talent and style and, and, and all those kind of uh, buzzwords as well. Um, it was a nice little story. Apparently, during the game, uh, he gave West Brom, West Brom's uh, quite experienced fullback Graham Williams a bit of a torrid time. Um, he nutmegged him quite early on. Uh, reports suggest uh, say uh, United won one nil. And there was a tale that uh, said several several years later, uh, Williams, the West Brom fullback, uh, who was uh, who was twisted up. By by uh, George Best met him and he said to George Best will you stand still for a minute so I can look at your face and George Best said why he said because all I've seen of you is your ass disappearing down the touchline <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah a great start to his uh, Manchester United career and then um, in the 64-65 season he's playing alongside Dennis Law and, and Bobby Charlton amongst other other great players and they won the, the title for the first time since the, the pre-Munich era Dennis Law Bobby Charlton George Best Holy Trinity It's not hey, bad that's an statues advert. are three of them That's Old Trafford now yeah. Indeed there is Indeed there is um, It was slightly later on than that When uh, United went to Benfica In the European Cup That he would really Make a name for himself abroad uh, Benfica were one of Europe's Big boys at the time And the Stade de Luz Was an absolute fortress It was one of those grounds Back in the day Where you just thought Well you're not getting anything there Yeah yeah um, And uh, before the game Sir Matt Busby said to his team Now let's keep it tight For the first 15 minutes uh, within 12 minutes United were 2-0 up and Best had got the both yeah. <laughs> uh, did he like get told off? Of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah almost like a kind of um, kind of premature version of Gareth Bale against Inter you know <laughs> yeah it, it could be seen as that <laughs> but uh, not as good, good. No, yeah. not, not as good obviously I like to think that Best sort of said yeah that's a good idea but I've got a better one yeah um, <laughs> I'm two right, better ones. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right of that story where of the, so I'm, I'm not if it's true or not, but it's an excellent story of. of um, There's a lot of surrounding George. Best oh, exactly. Like that. <laughs> it's, it's a great, it's a great story anyway. Some some uh, visiting manager was walking down the uh, the corridor outside the changing rooms. Oh, it's and, Old Trafford. Yeah, Old Trafford, and you could hear um, Busby doing his team talk, and George Best just standing outside doing keepy ups, <laughs> and, he, and, he th- and the manager's like, "This is a bit strange. You know, what, what, why isn't George Best in the team talk?" He thought, oh, I'll, "I'll ask Sir Matt Busby afterwards what why," and. Um, <clears throat> 
he goes up to Matt Busby and says look you know I heard you doing your team talk through the wall but George Best wasn't in there he was just just yeah. doing keep it up so why is that he said well all I say is just give it to George <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's absolutely wonderful yeah. Um, so yeah uh, back to the Benfica game United won 5-1 and Best was absolutely incredible that the game um, really put his uh, his stock very high indeed and after winning the league title again in 67 Manchester United and Best beat Benfica again uh, this time in the 68 European final at Wembley uh, that season Best uh, scored he scored 28 goals he scored um, in the final as well he scored in the final the keeper. brilliant PFA and European football of the year that really was his year 68 mm. European uh, final uh, European cup winners PFA player of the year European football of the year and he was 21-22 around that time yeah. Yeah. Dennis Law described him at the time as a complete player as we said good with both feet he, good in the air people don't realise oh, yeah. that it was mm. he, strong heading uh, ability and he wasn't just this um, luxury player because obviously there's a lot of off the field antics and you think of him as a bit of a playboy etc etc and, and good goals and flashy skills and sometimes you can think a bit of a luxury player absolutely not no he worked hard he mm. got, I mean if you think you know if you think Lionel Messi gets a lot of treatment, you're <laughs> yeah. best getting hacked there. <laughs> Chopper just Harris. did not go down. Yeah. Mm. It, was like, it was almost like a completely antithesis of, of, his, of his philosophy to go down. He takes so many hits. I mean, there's a famous one against Chelsea where he breaks yeah. through. Was that Chopper Harris? Yeah, it might have yeah. been, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'll tell you now, it'll be a straight red. Yeah. <laughs> straight red. He stays on his feet, though, and still yeah. scores, you know. No, it, it, and he was capable of scoring so many different types of goals that's as right. well, you know. The one he scored um, against Spurs when Pat James comes out for the punch. And sort of gets an all right punch when mm. it comes to best. He just lifts it over him. The lob. Him. Mm. Yeah, instinctive. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it's worth looking through sort of a best of George Best moments because. Uh, oh, but maybe. it's mental you say that he was only 21, 22 when this, all this happened. Yeah. He did peak very early as a player, didn't he? Very much so, yeah. Um, and of course, you know, it wasn't long after that 68 final where he was on the front pages, he was on, you know, a bit more of a television yeah. into his private life. Do you remember, it, well, you don't remember, but seeing uh, on, on documentaries the house he moved into, everyone said it looked like a toilet. Do you remember that? No, I haven't seen it, no. Oh, it's quite an odd one, but anyway. Um, yeah, fast cars and um, toilet houses, toilet houses, <laughs> yeah. fast toilets. It's, 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 it's what dreams are made of, quite yeah. simply. Yeah. Um, in, Loose in, in, cisterns, in, in, <laughs> house cars, uh, flushes. Um, so uh, yeah, it wasn't long after this, as I say, that Best became well known for his uh, off the field antics. Uh, he was opening nightclubs, uh, stories of excessive drinking, gambling, womanising, uh, all come, becoming a little too commonplace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but he, he did once say that I was the one who took football off the back pages and put it on the page one, you know. Mm. <laughs> oh, he was, he, yeah, absolutely right. I mean, everyone says he was around at the time, you know, he was the first sort of one to it, do it that. He was the first spice boy, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that was Neil Ruddick. Um, <laughs> Phil it, Babb, yeah. Uh, in 1971, he famously scored uh, the goal that never was against England when Gordon Banks, he went to kind of drop kick it and best just kicked the ball uh, away as he threw it up. Yeah. That was the same uh, season as his uh, Pat Jennings goal, 71. I right, thinking. yeah. Um, and then uh, Old Trafford when uh, Tommy Doherty came in uh, as manager for Manchester United it kind of signalled the end of, of best career um, and it, it, by the sort of uh, you getting on for the mid 70s even Matt Busby who was the director of the club he wanted best out of the club and well, it, I, felt, I think they felt they had done everything they could for him really. yeah I, well he was getting a little bit out of control by then mm. um, and so at the age of 27 uh, he, he briefly retired from football but it's so just sad you know when the man should be in his peak mm. yeah um, the, the, the nice stat about his United career is it's very tempting to say oh you know he didn't do what he could have done blah 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 he didn't, didn't play as often as he could he played more games for United than uh, Nobby Stiles Brian Robson Dennis Law Brian Kidd and Eric Cantona yeah wow. so he was there for a while you know yeah, he, that's right because he came right. through very young didn't he that's Which right is, and was a starter from pretty much the beginning mm. he, and I suppose the fact that he made the decision to retire shows he was quite emotional as well and very sort of you know headstrong mm. clearly a very complicated character yeah. sort of he holds the post. He holds the post-war record for the most goals by a United player in a single match, which was uh, six against Northampton Town in an, in an eight-two FA Cup win. That was his comeback match from a ban or something as well, wasn't it? It was. Um, it, I forget what, but it was a comeback for something. Oh, right. it, it was missed. really, <laughs> yeah. it was again. really, really <laughs> sort of making a point. Yeah. Yeah. He was playing catch up. Yeah, well, I bet they were going. What you do it all the time? <laughs> I think he was. I think he was top sco- a goal scorer at United for six seasons. Brilliant. And didn't he hold the, the United record for the most goals in all competitions? Forty-one, and Cristiano Ronaldo broke, broke it. it. Right, yeah. And he wasn't an out-and-out striker. No, size, that's it. it. Very much so. He was an attacking midfielder or yeah. winger. You know, much like Ronaldo. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. He did come back into football after Manchester United and became a real journeyman. I think we yeah. can all agree. <laughs> Playing in all sorts of places, uh, South Africa, America, and Scotland. R- read some of the best names. Um, some of the names of the clubs he played for are absolutely super. I mean, who could forget his loan period at Jewish Guild? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or Sea or Bee <laughs> of Hong Kong. And that's as in like a sort of bumblebee that lives in the sea. Yeah. That's spelt. So what you like about his, um, his, as a player in his later career, but he had a 100% scoring record for Osborne Park Galeb. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't have been that way no, should it it no. really shouldn't have um, <laughs> and lest we forget Cork Celtic but um, uh, yeah uh, he did have a few successful moments in his career it has to be said after Manchester United yes of course it wasn't the European Cup um but still, uh, he went to the LA Aztecs in the North American Soccer League and uh, had a, a successful time there. And then perhaps had his best in post United at Fulham, which he described as his most enjoyable time. I'd imagine he would have done in West London in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he played in the same team as fellow uh, Dean Wendass Hall of Fame inductee Rodney Marsh, who he once tackled during a game quite famously, which I quite <laughs> like. Can you imagine those two? Yeah, out in the town. God, <laughs> I saw Rodney Marsh score a basal kick on YouTube that got disallowed oh. Uh, oh. When, he, when he was playing Nazel. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> that shouldn't be allowed. Well, Even if you're outside, Mark Lawrence is disrespectful. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Yeah. That's why it was disallowed. Yeah. Um, and now there was a great, great moment in the man's career in 1976. When Northern Ireland were away in Holland um, uh, for a uh, World Cup qualifier, I think it would have been. And I think it was journalist Bill Elliott who told this. Um, Story. You and said he, that like it was a, like a cowboy called Jealous Bill Elliot. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to stay away from Billy Elliot. And all that, yeah. um, but anyway, uh, I think it was Bill Elliot. He said that uh, he um, asked him uh, who he thought the, the best player in the world was at the time. And uh, the people were talking about Johan Cruyff as the best player in the world, of course. And the, uh, Elliot said, it, better than you, uh, to George Best. And George looked at him and just laughed. And he went, you're kidding, aren't you? Yeah. He said, I'll tell you what, tonight I'm going to nutmeg Cruyff. First chance I get. <laughs> um, so when uh, uh, so this is, when both teams were announced one by one, and the players trotted out one by one in, in Holland, Best uh, came out of um, the tunnel. And above him, there was a beautiful blonde girl, apparently, who reached over with uh, a single rose, quite long stemmed. <laughs> and, and best like a sp- sort of medieval gel. Yeah. <laughs> and best, best spotted this, and he trotted back. Apparently, this is, this is um, Elliot recounting the story. Uh, he spotted this, uh, he just, uh, trotted back, and took the flower out of her hand and kiss, kissed her hand, and then run back onto the pitch, waving the rose at the punters, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then five minutes into the game, he received the ball. This is, he was playing out wide on the left. And instead of going towards goal, as you'd hope one of your wingers would do, he turned infield. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he went past three Dutch players, got to Cruyff, a bewildered Johan Cruyff yeah. on, the, on the other flank, uh, <laughs> took the ball straight up to him, dipped the shoulder and nutmegged him. And then as he ran past it to collect the ball, he, he punched his fist in the air. And there, was, <laughs> and there was only a few journalists who were like, oh Because my it's goodness. all about the team effort. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Disrespectful, as you say. Yeah. <laughs> Mancini would have taken him off for that. Yeah. Lawrence, Lawrence <laughs> was beside himself. <laughs> that That's is, a, I don't care what you say, sure. that is wonderful behaviour. Sure video of that to Mark Lonsley just sits in the corner rocking yeah. <laughs> go away go I'd, away. I'd have shoved that rose right up his ass. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like to think he had the rose in his mouth the whole time yeah. <laughs> castanets oh dear um, after Fulham we went back to uh, Nazzle and played for the LA Aztecs I think it was in his second spell there where he scored the greatest soccer goal of all time oh, yeah. you remember that one Jim? oh we've all seen that where, yeah. on, the, on the clip when, the, the, when he sort of weaves in and out of did the... he score for the earthquakes as well I thought that was for the earthquakes I the earthquakes yeah, was it? Was it? Oh, forgive yeah, me. We just took it around everybody. Yeah, yeah. there's in a the, beautiful, in a, in I think a the tiny third space. Person, as well. yeah, <laughs> the third person he takes it past as well. It's just. I, even now if I saw a footballer do that I'd yeah. be like that is incredible <laughs> I swear a couple of those defenders die in that <laughs> it's, just, it's just so good death by skill yeah. so that is what I would have wanted and it's like and it's like you know when, in, in, when the um, something sort of, like a door's closing and Indiana Jones sort of grabs his hat at the last, last moment yeah. like, he runs towards goal and uh, he's taking the pass on his place and then this one sta- this guy just starts running at him full pelt <laughs> and he's just got seconds to squeeze it past the keeper yeah. oh man if we have to remember at that point that at this point in his career George Best wasn't even trying <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he, he was very much on the source. Um, he was named as Nazel's best midfielder in his second se- second spell with uh, LA Aztecs, which was a hell of an achievement because there were some players over there at the time. Yeah. Uh, he also played for Fort La- Lauderdale Strikers as well as the uh, San uh, Jose Earthquakes, as we said. Uh, in 1982, 
when Northern Ireland qualified for the World Cup there was a chance that he could have played at a tournament but he wasn't picked and, and thus never appeared at World Cup finals which is a crying shame really mm. Um, Should have got him in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, uh, you know, we get into the 80s. Unfortunately, we have to say that his, his drinking was seriously bad at this point. He was convicted of drink driving and uh, a number of other offences. Um, and he had a, a brief uh, jail sentence. And it all started to go terribly, terribly wrong uh, for Best, uh, as I'm sure. Uh, I, think there's a sense, I think there's a sense with Best that... That um, <clears throat> he seems to sort of he seems to go through through his later life maintaining that he would never have done anything different and how yeah yeah and it was uh, for, certainly for me I remember towards the end of his life thinking yeah you're protesting a bit too much yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah. there are regrets in your life yeah. and you're not saying them and you're making a real point of pretending that you've got no regrets but actually I think you probably have got quite a few yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is a real crying shame because you, you know, right. he was an addict he was an alcoholic you know and and, and so it is, a, it is an illness and, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and we don't blame him for that but it. It's a, it's a crying shame, as you say, that he, we didn't. Well, the general probably didn't see him for more. Yeah, his mum actually died of complications from alcoholism. So That's obviously, right. it's a big history that yeah. it's mm. more complicated than him just being a bit of a playboy. I think. Well, Michael Parkinson uh, said that the only um, tragedy George Best has to has to confront is that he will never know how good he could have been. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, he was asked once what his biggest regret was, and he said, "I missed a penalty against Chelsea at Old Trafford." I wish I could take it again. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. I, I, for me, that's protesting way too much. I don't yes. want to cheapen his, his entry into the, into, the, into the Hall of Fame and stuff because he yeah. richly deserves it. But I mean, you know, what, what could he yeah. have been? You know, yeah. what's, and, and it's not his fault, obviously, that you know, he was practically... I mean, there was a game for Northern Ireland against Scotland which he, you know, he almost won on his own. Mm. You know, he said he didn't, have, he didn't have support around him at international level. We understand that. That's right, know? that's right. Well, he, he died at the age of 59. And uh, in the years before his death, of course, he was in all sorts of trouble. Um, and sadly, the drinking got the better of him, and he died on November twenty fifth, two thousand and five. Um, Belfast City Airport was named, uh, renamed George Best Belfast City Airport as a tribute to the great man, um, and that was unveiled on what would have been his sixtieth birthday mm. on the twenty second of May two thousand and six. But I'll leave uh, the, the, the final words to the great man himself. He said, "Pele said he thought I was the greatest ever player. I have always thought that I was the best ever player, and that's the way you have to look at it. I have never looked at another player and felt inferior." My goodness, he's coming into the Deep and Dash Hall of Fame. For the Belfast boy, George Best. There's a nice quote here actually from um, Joe Mercer, who was the Man City man at the time, so a big rival. He said, um, It seems impossible to hurt Best. All manner of men have tried to intimidate him. Best merely glides along, riding tackles and brushing giants aside like leaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Nice. Absolutely. Rival manager as well, so yeah. you know.